well lately. And so if you tune in and you can hear me, but you struggle to hear me, please just let me know in the comments so I can fix that by easily taking these AirPods out. It's an easy fix. Okay, somewhat out of breath. I blame that on my doggies. Rapid fire somatic inquiry. <clears throat> Who comes up with these names? But the name uh, arises because of the nature of how we get something to arise. So with rapid fire somatic inquiry, the kind of the purpose is to allow arise some command that's somatically held. So the command commands are just like you think they would be like, run away, don't, pull back. I can't. Stop. Get off me. Get away. Get out. They are things that happen to us when we were kids in traumatizing or scary situations. And we may not even be aware of the command and how we imprint it with it. But it's something that we discover in the Killaby inquiries where we're doing somatic inquiry with someone and we now know how to pull up these commands but they were first discovered sort of by accident. Well, just through curiosity. During the time in which, so I had spinal stenosis, which was at times excruciating chronic in the spine, mid spine. That was healed through this work, uh, specifically the anger repression part of this work. When I say this work, I mean the kill the inquiries. So obviously with that healing happening, people have become interested in this work because of the potential for reaching, lifting up and seeing, well, actually just lifting anger, repression, fear, repression, other emotional repressions. Because science says that that's behind chronic pain. Okay, so it's behind chronic pain. Science says this, but it's like, well, how do you make the connection between what science is saying and what is our, what our direct experience is? Well, in the Killaby inquiries, we have learned how to feel into certain areas of the body and not just locate or discover commands in the body to repress anger, to repress fear. So the literal commands for the repression are discoverable now. Well, that's big news, actually. If you haven't uh, stop your breakfast, please, and hear what I just said, <laughs> that we have discovered the commands behind trauma and repression. So you've discovered them like that we can show you these commands in your own experience. They're connected to your inner body. They're unconscious. <clears throat> so at first they're right under the, la the radar where you, you can't detect them. All you might experience is like pain or contraction. That's my, what might show up or illness. But then through the process of inquiry, as we feel, as you feel into these areas that are painful or contracted, not only do we discover these commands, which in and of itself is amazing, when we discover the command, we can begin witnessing it over and over again to let it dissolve, be seen as empty, fall away. The command to repress anger or repress fear or repress other emotion. And then in my case, when that happened, the pain went away. And this is no small thing. Like my chronic pain went away. The nerve pain because of discovering these commands. So trauma commands and repression commands, let me be clear about what I mean. A trauma command would be again, something like stop, don't run away. I can't get off, get off me. Again, something that commands us to do something which would be fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Some trauma response. So something happens to us, the trauma response kicks in and we have certain commands that go along with the response that try to protect us. Those commands don't just go away after they're used during the traumatic event. They get imprinted into our system. This is the science of trauma. This is not just me making stuff up. This is how it works. It get, gets imprinted into our nervous system. These experiences and literally parts of our brain and nervous system take notes to remember what is happening during the traumatic event so that anything like that, any event like that later, the system knows to be triggered to protect itself against similar threats. And that's generally how trauma works. 
I'm going to talk more about these commands. But I first want you to just hear this. Um, I think it's livewell.com has this explanation of how trauma is encoded on a cellular level before we talk about this. Listen to this. The way the experiences become encoded is that on the surface of the neuron, whenever we experience an event that triggers a fight, flight, or a freeze response, the AMPA receptors flare up. These are our soldiers that stand at attention. They are on high alert to keep us safe. Stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline are released and they start a process of protein synthesis, telling the amino acid glutamate to bind to the AMPA receptor soldier and hold them in place like cement. They will stay like that forever. And this is interesting. This whole situation, what's happening in the in the um, in in this traumatic scenario here, is that what happens as a result of the trauma will stay like that forever. It's important to know until and unless the memory is reconsolidated and the trauma is neutralized, which is what we do with KI, neutralizing trauma. But essentially, these imprints of scary things that happen, they're imprinted into the system. Now, including a part of the brain that takes notes on what this, what the, and what the experience means, not just the sights and sounds and smells of something that happened, but what it means and the identities that go along with what happened. So there's, this is an elaborate system designed to protect us, and this website explains it. So basically, this will stay in place forever until the memory is reconsolidated and the trauma is neutralized. Meanwhile, the hippocampus next door acts like the journalist, taking all the memories and meanings and the notes of the sights, smells, sounds, and environment. Once this happens, anything that looks, smells, sounds, or feels similar to the initial, initial negative event, the AMPA receptors will immediately pick up on it and tell the body to release stress hormones. There is someone explaining from a somewhat scientific viewpoint what happens when we get triggered. Um, but it goes deeper than that because... Well, let me see if I can just translate the science into my direct experience. Whatever they're saying about these mechanisms that record information is correct <laughs> because you can verify that in session. So we verify in session exactly what they're saying. But there's an aspect of the our consciousness that has recorded the event and the meanings and identities that go with the event. <clears throat> and part of what goes with the event are these commands. Even this article talks about fight, flight, fright, <laughs> fight, flight, freeze. I would also add fawn as a trauma response. So they talk about these trauma responses, and they're essentially saying all this gets imprinted. Now, how does it actually get imprinted in our direct experience is where it gets interesting. We put the science aside, and then we go in from awareness, inner body, awareness, literally just paying attention to the inner body. I'm learning how to ask questions and state inquiries which are provocative, which actually provoke a material that's connected to your somatic experience. Cellular memory, if you will, but it comes in the form of words and pictures that are at first less conscious and embedded into the sensation or pain. But then through provoking them up with inquiry, they become more conscious. You can literally hear and see these commands and memories and meanings and identifications that are connected with body. Remember, the body keeps the score. So these memories and programs are not just here in our consciousness, like available to us. Because part of, if you read in different studies, you'll find that trauma results in repression. So and repression is unconsciousness. So there are certain feelings and thoughts connected to trauma that are so scary or painful that we learn how to pull, to push them down unconsciously so that they're less conscious or not conscious. And so it might show up as, the research says, illness, chronic pain, and I would say also body contraction. Body contractions, like 
there are Sanskrit words for it, but the words that they use in the East to describe emotional congestion, um, the word eludes me right now. But there are words in the in Sanskrit that, that correspond to these energies in the body that hang on and that are stubborn. And now what we know from science is that they are trauma and repression. When these spirituality, these spiritual programs were traditions were developed 100, 200, 300 or more years ago, in some cases a couple thousand years ago, we were not trauma informed. We did not know how it was encoded on the neuron. We know all this now. So that changes the nature of even spiritual investigations to understand that our experience is different than what we thought it was. The trauma research brings to light things about our experience that we did not know. And so not only is the science doing that, but we're discovering things in our experience here with this work that we did not know previously. And this is where these commands come in. So listening to how that information is recorded in the system, imprinted from that scientific view, how does that translate to our experience? It translates at least in part to these commands. Now, these are the things that are below the radar. Part of what, so there's a lot of material, words and pictures connected to our inner bodies. There's the number one thing you should know. Your body, in the sense that it feels physical and contracted or tight, or if your body doesn't feel empty, translucent, spacious, <clears throat> chances are then your body has all this material in it. The body holds the, keeps the score. Uh, the brain is involved. This material, is, this material has been encoded in your system, imprinted. And so these sensations and pain, the pain that you have is not just physical. That's what the science is pointing to. What happens is the imprinted material is never processed for most people. Or if it's processed, it isn't processed skillfully enough to truly undo the, the imprints to neutralize the trauma. So what we have found is that you have to go deeper than just witnessing thoughts in meditation or talking about things in therapy or even deeper than just doing somatic work where you just come down and feel and rest. We've discarded a lot of those because they, people have been doing those for years, coming to this work and, and their contractions and their chronic pain doesn't really get seen through or dissolved for many people. Some people it does, but we don't see those people. So we see the people who just, because of this trauma and how it's encoded, the repressions that go with it, they have a contracted body, a painful body. So we teach them first, how to discover the commands. Well, not first, but when it comes to the process of dissolving these contractions or pain, you have to learn in this work about trauma commands and repression commands. Okay, so forget what you've, what you've heard is the scientific view of what happens in the body. Now, forget that, and let's talk about what it's actually like in interior awareness. You don't see when you're resting as awareness or meditating. You don't see neurons. You don't see receptors. You don't experience cortisol or you don't see cortisol or adrenaline. You may feel the effects of these things. But the effects show up as words, pictures, feeling, sensation. Appearing to awareness. Witnessing awareness. So everything that we have to discover from an interior awareness perspective is found in the words, pictures, feelings, and sensations, almost everything. So the trauma that they're referring to and the repression that science refers to can be found in words, pictures, feelings, and sensations. So first of all, I was explaining last week, what's nice how we're tracking the science now is Science, if you compile the studies, for example, behind addiction, you'll find that the science says there are drivers there. Trauma, again, trauma and repression. These two words, pay attention to these two words, trauma and emotional repression, because I 
as I look at the science, it's just opening to these concepts and saying these two concepts are really important for the development of humans. And I agree with it because we can verify, just as science says, that trauma and repression lead to addiction. We can actually link it up and direct experience even more than that, like where it stops being intellectual and it stops and it starts being directly experiential. So it would be something like this. There would be like a contraction or a pain or some energy blockage in someone's body. And as we take them in via awareness and begin to inquire into a sensation, what they find is like memories that correspond to trauma. And I don't just mean like abuse, neglect, the big trauma. I mean like relational trauma, developmental trauma, like difficult cold father, judgmental mother, bullies, something that happened in sixth grade art class, these kinds of things. So they, we, they, people literally see images connected to the sensation. It's like, it's almost just like <laughs> verifying science directly. Here's sensation. There is the memory or the memories of the trauma. And then connected to the memories are the words the meaning that's being taken down by the hippocampus. It's all there in the memories. As you, If you learn how to extract the words, here they come. So they go from being unconscious to conscious just by looking and asking certain questions. So there's the trauma connected to the sensation. And then we can easily pull up the repression connected to the same sensation. So with the trauma, there are not only meanings and identifications, but there are trauma commands that you discover, but they're very unconscious. And so you could be feeling like pain or contraction and not recognizing that there's a constant trauma command going on in the inner body. It's a program that runs and it basically says, it's, it's, it's like being stuck in fight, flight, freeze mode but you can directly experience it as a command that says things like run, get away, fight, don't, can't, get off me, stop, get away, these kinds of things. And so when you make contact with the command, you'll start to find that the command is running continuously. And then you start making it conscious. I'm going to talk about rapid fire inquiry in a little bit. But first, the first thing we teach people is how to make the commands conscious around this aspect of our work, which means literally bringing the command into awareness because normally it's not in awareness. It's unconscious. So once, so just knowing that one of the things that we do is bring commands into, into awareness. And I'm going to come back to that when I talk about rapid fire. Another thing that we show people is when we're talking about the trauma, so let me just back up. Science says trauma and repression drive people to addiction. So we see it directly. A sensation in the body which drives people to use something addictively is connected directly to trauma and repression. And you can literally pull them up and see them connected to it. <clears throat> it isn't, this is not secondhand knowledge, this is direct. And so in seeing that, we want to be able to pull up the commands on the trauma side and on the repression side. So there are commands with trauma, which again are the commands that go with fight, flight, freeze, fawn. There's those, or those commands contributing to the contraction or pain. I'll talk about that in a second. They're literally keeping it around. And then the pain, I mean, the repression is like working in tandem with that. So if you have these trauma memories, we often learn in the memories that we have to repress aspects of ourselves. And it was unconsciously learned. It's not going to be a point in time where you remember doing that. But somehow associated with the trauma, you'll see, you'll start to unearth and discover commands that tell you to repress emotion. These are very unconscious. You have to learn how to provoke them up. They don't come up from meditation or mining or sitting around wondering or thinking about this. They don't usually come up in therapy. 
because they're unconscious. They're literally unconscious. Like, they're happening, but you're not aware of them. <clears throat> Repression commands. And those would be things like, with regard to expressing anger or sadness or some emotion, don't hold back. Hold it in. Hold on. Stop. I can't. These kinds of commands. So these commands that are repression commands and trauma commands are very powerful commands. How do we know they're powerful? Because we pull them up in inquiry and we can feel how connected they are to the somatic experience. They're deeply rooted in the somatic experience. And so it just verifies science in that way because science says that the body keeps the score so we see it directly as we come and feel into the stomach or pain we see the score we see the trauma and the repression and we start working with the commands at some point this is where i want to talk about rapid fire inquiry the thing that you should know about these commands is that they're very persistent so if we teach you how to discover them it's not like you can pull them up in awareness and just watch them for 30 seconds and then they never return their commands so they're doing this constantly don't express anger hold it back don't this is happening constantly as a program that has to run constantly otherwise how would it work yeah repression is a part of our personality so it's not like it can take a break our personality doesn't take a break as part of our personality there's a repression and there's a command connected to it it's very very powerful more than one command actually so in bringing up an awareness what i learned how to do for myself was make these commands fire in a rapid fashion so that's what we're doing with some people in the Achilles members area who are ready for that is learning how to provoke the command up that says um i can't i have to hold back anger or run run and then bring up an awareness and it starts to fire rapidly you're basically finally getting a taste of how it operates because it operates like that as a continuous story so when you can finally get up into awareness there it is sounding itself up continuously and you're not doing it and it's fascinating when you're able to get it up because you can see that it's involuntary unconscious automatic and it just sits there and goes, but you witness it and witness it. And then there's some tricks that we bring into the witnessing that neutralize the somatic energy that goes with the rapid fire. So basically the rapid fire command starts to go slower and slower, like a bicycle wheel that's slowly coming to a stop. It takes a while to get there. The command keeps firing it until it peters out and falls away. And then there's somatic shifting in that. And then we do that with repression. So it's not just like a command that says, run, run, run. Now think about it. If you have that unconscious command in your body, like fight, run, it's going to create discomfort. If something like that running in your body constantly or associated with your body and then further stressing you out is the repression command or commands there. So with rapid fire inquiry, we show people how to pull up this command to hold back anger, for example. Um, and then pulling this up and just witnessing it like that again, it's like automatic, unconscious, involuntary. And just like the other, like a bicycle wheel, it starts to slow down. First, with this rapid fire inquiry, you have to learn how to pull it up in the rapid fire fashion because it likes to hide. And so even when it shows itself, it likes to show itself in just flashing thoughts. If you're lucky enough to make contact with an unconscious command, it's most likely like that. It's like in and out. It may not even be a command. You may just see like memory of something that happened. And, and that might be the only evidence you see. People often report that, that like they'll say, yeah, I've got this contraction. And every now and then I see this one memory or these memories but hiding connected to those memories can be the command but if you don't know how to discover it you can get stuck and the contraction can remain stuck 
because you're not aware of the command that keeps it in place. You're just aware of like some memories. Showing people how to discover the commands, bring them, bring them up in rapid fire fashion, letting them sort of die out through the observing of them directly. And then again, that, so that had tremendously beneficial effects on my spine. I've said before that it's like watching a miracle happen. Now I didn't have the rapid fire inquiry in the beginning of the healing of the pain. It came near the end when I started to receive the nature of these commands and how important it was to bring them into awareness because if I didn't, they seemed to operate unconsciously creating, again, contraction pain in my spine. For you, it might be contraction pain in throat, shoulder, arms, elbows chest, head, stomach, sternum, pelvic area, buttocks, could be legs. Any area of the body apparently can become a repository for unexpressed, unacknowledged, repressed material. And it has these commands with them. This is something really fresh and new in spirituality um, to be talking about these things and how to discover them in your own experience. I'm not going to do the experiential work for that online because when you start bringing these rapid fire commands into awareness, you have to be concerned with at least the risk of overwhelm. Think about it. These are trauma commands and repression commands. So repression commands are holding back emotion and trauma commands are directly tied to very painful and scary memories, which have emotion on them. So if we're showing people how to do it in a conscientious way um, and it's evolving, we're learning how to take people deep, but also showing them how to take care of their, their nervous system as they go. There's always the risk of overwhelm when you're dealing with like skillful somatic work that pulls up stuff from the past. So the Killaby members area is the place that I created to work with people on this issue. This was the first reason for the members areas that I knew people were going to need help with this particular skill because it's not intuitive and repression and trauma is designed to stay unconscious. So I knew that if we had tools, which we do to bring it up, that people were going to find challenges there, not just the potential for overwhelm, but resistance to even doing the work because even if you're in pain because repression and trauma is so close to our identity that it's threatening so the forum was created to support people in that if you want to do this work it's not going to happen here on youtube go to the killing me members area it's as easy as going to my facebook public page go to the pin post at the top click on the link there's a price per month, but I think it's well worth it because I'm meeting with people regularly in meetings and I'm showing you how to do the work and I'm following up with you and supporting you. Um, yes, I will try to put the link there. Thanks for that suggestion. I'll try to put the link at the bottom here too. Now, again, I won't do the experiential work on video, especially with this because of the potential for overwhelm and resistance which may stop you in the process so but if you're interested we're doing it in the members area join us and in fact i'll leave you with this one of the most interesting things that i discovered connected to my chronic pain was this program that basically said i have to hurt myself to protect others and for me, that's one of the mottos of repression, especially anger repression. The idea is, is that I'm not going to put my anger on you, but I do have anger because everyone has it. I'm going to hurt myself. I'm not even going to feel it. Certainly not going to express it. So I'm going to stuff it down and then it turns into pain or contraction. So I'm hurting myself in order to protect you. And that's a real thing that people believe who are repressing and a lot of times that belief is unconscious and people don't even know that they have it. 
with the Killaby inquiries, we have a way of testing whether you actually believe that or not. Look, I'll do it with you. But you have to do it skillfully, Witty. So take a few moments where you're just breathing and watching your breath to let the mind quiet. You don't need to get the mind super quiet because we want to know what's in your waking consciousness here. We're not trying to meditate you into la la land. We want to see what's really going on for you in relationships. So just a few breaths to quiet the mind and then pull up all of the VIPs in your life. So that'd be mom and dad and siblings partners, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, close friends, bosses. This would be a panorama, if you will, of all the important people in your life. These would be the, the close relationships in which you would repress emotion. If you were repressing it, it would be here, those people. Now, but while you're looking at them, feel directly into an area of the body where you hold the most energy. It could be a chronic pain area, like feel into your elbow if you have chronic pain there, or lower back. If it's more like a contraction, it'll be like a dense sensation in the throat or the head or heart or stomach. Locate that, feel into it, bring awareness into the sensation and rest. Now, the reason that's important is because repression of emotion happens in relationship. So you want to be looking at people that you're in relationship with. If you don't have people up there, space has never triggered you. See, people trigger you into repressing. So look at people and also feel into the sensation. Because if you're holding any energy anywhere, you want to be aware of it. You want to be in the area, feeling into that area. Okay. So here's your inquiry. Before I give you the inquiry, let me set up some context. I want you to feel into that area and look at these important people and just get a sense of how you might be holding back anger or other emotion because you're trying to protect them. You don't want to hurt their feelings. You don't want them to not like you. So you hold back, just getting a sense of, it may not be anger, it could be you hold back other emotions getting a sense that you hold back and then now noticing how your body is uncomfortable or painful at the same time so is there a connection here here's how we find it as you're feeling into the body like that and looking at people say this i don't have to hurt myself to protect others even if you don't know what it means your body knows and it could be that your body just responded as if, yes, I do have to hurt myself to protect others. That tells you that that program is there. And what that program means essentially is that I have to hold anger back, manifested as pain or contraction, hurt myself so that I don't hurt others by putting my pain on them. And there's the beginning of finding a command to hurt yourself or to be in pain so that others aren't hurt or put in pain by your emotions. You can tweak it a little bit and just ask it in different ways. So looking at these people, feeling into that area of the body, just say it this way, I can hurt others. Now, that's not an invitation to hurt others. It's, it's like a, an inquiry. pulls up whether you're even able to express because they may hurt other people. So when you say I can hurt others, that part that represses emotion may say no. So there's a program there designed to make sure that doesn't happen. And that's the repression. So when you say I can hurt others, even I can hurt others emotionally, watch how that area acts up, feel it. And then if you say, I don't have to hurt myself, just say it that way as you're feeling into the pain and looking at people. Even that sometimes has a 
reaction like, yes, I do have to hurt myself. So what that translates into is I have to hurt myself. In other words, I have to be in pain to protect other people from my emotions. I have to be in pain. Now that ends up being a command. Even the first time you discover it, it just feels like a thought. But as you, as if you come and work with this with me, you'll find that that's more than just a random thought. That's a command that I have to be in pain. I have to hurt myself. If it's there, it's a command. And so that command is running full time in your system, not very conscious though, and creating that contraction or maintaining it or that pain, literally. So this is one of the commands that we bring out in rapid fire fashion. So we learn how to, with this work, you learn how to tweak that command up so that it's going automatically and fully in awareness in a rapid fire fashion and then learning how to use some tricks to wind that down naturally by observing it with a few little tricks there and then as it winds down the body again responds because the repression is connected right to it it responds by releasing energy or shifting or becoming more porous and that's the nature of the somatic work using rapid fire inquiry so I've already introduced how to do it in the Killy B members area. If you become a member, you can look at the recorded meetings. And one of the meetings that I did, I spent a good deal of time just explaining how to do it for people and taking them through it. In upcoming meetings, I'll be doing the same thing as supporting people with this and other tools. Uh, so it's a process of becoming a member there and then coming to the meeting. So let me dialogue with you on this to help you discover the commands. This is exciting, truly, <laughs> to be discovering this stuff and finally be holding a key to dissolving suffering and pain that has been very stubborn for people. Contractions and chronic pain are really stubborn, not just in spirituality, but just in life. Um, they're stubborn things for people. And as I said before, one of the reasons why I think they're so stubborn is because these commands are unconscious. They're literally not arising, but yet they're running constantly. So to have this key where you can have them arise consciously and dissolve over time. Priceless. Come join me. <laughs>